You might be thinking to yourself, who's leading the Belgian first division? It has to be Club Bruges. Nope. Oh, maybe Vincent Company's Underlecht. Nope. It's a side you probably have never heard about, but are a sleeping giant in Belgian football and haven't been in the Belgian first division for 48 years. Royal Union saint gilles a club that has 11 league titles, but the last one being in 1935. Hello and welcome to the Michael Talks Football Channel. In today's video, we are going to explain to you Royal Union saint gilles amazing rise to the Belgian First Division and currently leading the top of the league, seven points ahead of Club Bruges. To help me and help you explain more about this phenomenal club is Scott from the Belgian Football Podcast. You can find a link to their podcast in the description down below. Highly recommend it. You can keep up to date on all Belgian football news and they have a very special episode coming soon. So there's a little hint for you guys and to stay up to date with Belgian football. But let's first talk about the history of this fantastic club. Royal Union, who were founded in 1897, as we've talked about, are one of the most historic clubs in Belgian football. 11 league trophies, last one being in 1935. The club are still playing in their wonderful old school stadium, the Stade Joseph Marien, which was built way back in 1919. So this is a fantastic club with fantastic fan base. The stadium is small, but they're on the rise. And here is the interview with Scott. Yeah, well, a lot of people have been very surprised by what's happening with Union at the moment, um, kind of trailblazing at the top of the uh, the top of Division One A in, in Belgium at the moment, and obviously the the chat has now got round to can can they do it? Um, but I think it's important for people to understand that this this is not um, this is not a club that have come from obscurity to get into the position they're in. Um, Union have a have a real history and tradition in Belgian Belgian football and culture. Um, they're the third most successful championship winning side in in Belgian footballing history. So after Anderlecht, obviously, who most people will know about, um, and and Club Bruges, there is there is Union Saint Gilles who who won the Belgian title eleven times. Um, last time, obviously, being a very long time ago, just before the Second World War, um, and as you mentioned. Uh, just prior to this season, they were promoted back to the top flight for the first time in, in 40 years. They've, they've been away, um, been in various lower divisions, um, had a very difficult time, and everything really changed uh, three years ago when, when the club were, were bought by Tony Bloom. Uh, who also owns Brighton in, in England, and uh, Tony's business partner, uh, Alex Musio, who's the president of Union saint um bought the club um, with the intention of taking a new project on. And that's that's when things, things began to change. Well, I think the long-term objective was obviously um, to hopefully get, get Union back to the top division. And I think, in truth, that's happened a lot quicker than probably even uh, Alex and, and, and Tony uh, and Chris. Chris O'Loughlin, who you mentioned, the, the sporting director who looks after the technical side. So he works very closely on, on day-to-day footballing operations with head coach uh, Felice Mazu, who I'm sure we'll get round to talking about. Um, but yeah, I mean, the long-term objective has been achieved um, quicker than I think anybody expected um and really it's 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 come about through more than anything else um very smart recruitment and very smart and carefully targeted infrastructure developments as well so last season when the club were in uh, the lower division 1b before their promotion and um, they really flew through that 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 league um, they got into a situation where they were used to winning games. Um, it became second nature to them. And, you know, the confidence, um, you know, really became quite a significant factor in, in just, you know, their, their their outlook. And it was obvious from quite early on, even last season, when they were in the lower division, that uh, the likelihood of them being promoted was, was really strong. And it was more a question of when rather than if um and that that promotion was actually secured quite early on a number of weeks before the end of the season so they've actually been able to plan longer term for a return to the top flight earlier probably than than most clubs in their position would be able to do so um they've been well ahead of of where they would like to be 
um, and not had to make snap decisions, I think, which is very, very important as well. And it's worth mentioning, they haven't spent a, a huge amount of money at, at all in the summer to get them to where they are now. That's really important. I mean, the main men, they're, they're strikers uh, who have an unbelievable re uh, relationship together and connection. Uh, Dante Van Zier, a uh, young Belgian striker, and his uh, German striking partner, um, Dennis Undav, um, you know, they they were there last season. They, they fired the club um, to promotion and they've continued that outstanding form. There was a question mark about would they be able to do it at a higher level, that, that step up? And they answered that very early on. They, they picked up the, where, where they left off from last season. I mean, just, just to give you some of the numbers, um, if you don't already know, Union, obviously, top scorers. Um, well, joint top scorers at the moment, actually. They, them and Anderlecht have both scored 50 goals, but Undav and uh, Vanzier between them, um, Undav scored 16 goals and he's the top scorer in the top division at the moment and he's he's got nine assists and his striking partner, um, Dante Vanzier, has got 11 goals and he also has nine assists as well. So that accounts for just just I think about 54% of uh, Union's goals this season so it's really founded on their relationship and and the way that they play kind of tailors tailors to their strengths very much so it's it's, it's really about Van Zier and Undav and um, they're incredibly important and just to put that in perspective as well the next highest scorer in the squad actually is 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 another really good player their, their attacking Japanese midfielder Kairu Matoma um, who, who's Brighton owned but on loan at Union, as we mentioned. Uh, he's only on five goals, um, which is okay, considering we're halfway through the season. Um, but that, that just shows you how important Van Zier and Undav are to, to everything that Union do. And nobody in Belgium has managed to find a tactical solution to, to, to stop these guys. Well, Feliz, is, um, Feliz has been quite an underrated manager for a long time, I think. He he had a very successful spell at a club called Charleroi. Mm. Um, he did very well there uh, a number of years ago, and that, that allowed him to get his big move to uh, Genk. Uh, which which didn't go very well, um, and he wasn't he wasn't at Genk for very long at all. And sometimes in football, things just don't work out for you at a club. You know, you, you get your big move because you've done well somewhere. Um, you make that supposed step up, and for all sorts of complex reasons, it, it, it didn't work at Genk. Um, I think it was a timing issue as well. Um, he came to Genk at a point where the manager who'd left there had done very well. You know, so it's difficult sometimes to come in behind somebody who's who's had a track record of success and to maintain the same level in in your own in your own manner so i think he was he, in truth he was unfortunate with what happened at gink um, and what's happened is he's, he's gone away, had a period out of the game and had a, had a chance to kind of reflect on things. And a lot of people saw the move to Union as a step down. And in the sense that you're moving to a lower league club, yes, it is. But I think sometimes just that, that change in environment can, can be very good for you. But the, the truth is Union have a... Um, there, there's a culture inside the club. The club have an, a, an identity about them. They have a kind of set of values that they stick to and they apply that to everything that they do. And I think Felice has kind of bought into that and, and, and embedded that in, in, in the work of the club. Um, a lot of what they do is very courageous. They play very brave football. I mean, I've been using the word fearless in relation to the way that he's been coaching this season. And to just to give everybody an example of that, um, they play a really, really attractive brand of attacking football. They like to get the ball out wide and up. Um, up central early and fast as well. So sometimes they bypass midfield, um, which is never a bad thing. You know, some football fans will go, "Oh, right, okay." So you're just, you know, you're you're bypassing the midfield. You're not. It's actually it's much more carefully nuanced than that. Um, but yeah, so you know, they play a real attractive brand of football, and and Felice is the sort of coach who actually has got a, a winning mentality into this side. You know, they. At last season, Cruz Division 1B, they became serial winners, they, they, they got a feel for that, so they know how it works. Um, you bring in some fresh blood to the squad in the summer, strength in the squad, which helps you continue that work. Um, and then what you do is, um, I suppose you, you you know you get into the position they're in now, where, where, where everybody's effectively chasing them. But, you know, Felice is really, um, I think his attitude and his approach 
is really, really important here. Um, and he always makes positive changes to the side. Quite often, for example, you know, if a side gets gets a red card, what most coaches at any level do is they either take off um, a striker or, or an attacking player and put on either a holding player or another defender. Felice's instinct is always in a scenario like that, he'll either put on another striker or another attacking midfielder. So his his answer to that is still go for the win, you know? So he's not he's not a cautious coach by nature. He's very adventurous, and that's one of the reasons why they've picked up so many points as well. Um, because even when things have been going against them, they've been able to turn games around because of that attitude. I mean, just recently, uh, they played Circle Bruges in a really exciting home game. Uh, they went down 2-0 um, early in the game um, and looked like they were struggling for a while. And then they changed things up at half time after they got a red card. They come out in the second half and um, another attacking midfielder comes on. Um, so, you know, they they go for it and they managed to get the win in the end. Albeit in this occasion, it was from a lucky own goal, um, not, not of their own doing. But, you know, you know what happens in football. They're all saying about, you know, you make your own luck and they've done that. They've done that before. So a very positive coach who, who doesn't see things going against them as, as necessarily being a problem. There's a mentality there, a confidence. Um, and like I say, it's about it's about being brave, actually, uh, particularly when, you know, the odds are against you um, as well. And really interestingly, on a recruitment level as well, they've been very, very smart about how they've gone about this because most clubs obviously identify where areas where they want to strengthen. Uh, they will then go and profile players for those positions and then take it from there. But Union take it a step further. They do an awful lot of research and due diligence. So they'll be looking at what's the personality of this player like? What do they like to do away from training, away from football? Um, what are they like at home? What is this person going to be like in the dressing room? Who are we bringing in? You know, What's the ingredients we're putting together here? So it's as much about that when it comes to signings as it is what can they actually add on the pitch as well. And I think that's things that often get forgotten um, in football, which are equally important, of course. I mentioned smart recruitment a wee while ago, and it comes back to that again. I think it's a combination um, of a number of things. One of them is being able to recruit players who come from a kind of elite level background. And what I mean by that is players who perhaps have come through some of the top elite academies, both in Belgium and in other countries, who may have, for whatever reason, um, fallen out of favour at bigger clubs. Um, and have come to Union uh, with an opportunity to resurrect their career as well. So um, people from elite backgrounds who haven't been playing and there's been very smart targeted recruitment there. A good example of that actually is, is somebody like uh, Bart Newcoop, um, the defender who Union picked up from Feyenoord. Um, his contract was, was due to end and Feyenoord were not going to renew it and Union swooped very quickly and brought Bart Newcoop in and he's a very experienced player who's who's won the league with Feyenoord so you know he's um, experienced, has real leadership qualities so you can see how that's an attractive thing to have in the dressing room there if you're if you're, if you're wanting to build a successful squad. Um, Kairou Matoma has been recruited as well on loan from Brighton, really really exciting attacking Japanese Japanese player, uh, really skillful, um, capable of, of working some magic out of nothing, has goals in him as well as creativity. Um, and then there's recruiting players who you mentioned, like Dennis Undav, who has done extremely well. The sort of player who there might have been doubts of, can he do it at a higher level? Because he was con recruited from the lower levels of German football. But, you know, he's he's proved that, you know, he's a far better player than I think almost anybody thought he was and has, has, has raised his stock remarkably. So it's a combination of, you know, just, just being really careful about who you're bringing into the club and also why you're bringing them in as well. So they're not amassing players um, to, to, to kind of fill a squad with any real depth. Everyone's been targeted for a very, very specific reason. And it's as much about, as I was saying, the personality that the players have and what that brings to the club and the dressing room and the values that the club have as well. You know, players who might have been, like I say, come from an elite background who find themselves in a difficult 
situation um, come into a club that you know are looking to see how players respond to to, to adversity. So it, it's been some really smart work on the part of Alex and 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 Chris and and his team there. And and Felice has really bought into that culture and embedded that in 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 the footballing side of operations. Do you see them winning the Belgian First Division trophy? I knew this question was coming, and actually, people have been asking that, us this for weeks now, and I've been biting my tongue actually because it, it, it's kind of still quite early. Um, I think, I think, honestly, the answer to that is yes, they can win it, and the reason I say that is they've been so much better than everybody else. Um, and they they haven't had a dip in form really yet, so there's no signs of the juggernaut that you know has been rolling along stopping. Um, so yes, they can win it. Um, they're, they're they're playing great football. They're scoring freely defensively. They don't get enough credit for quite how good they've been. You know they've got they've got the best defence in the league as well at the moment. Um, so they're very solid. The balance that they've got there on the pitch uh, is working and it's working very well. So I think they can win it. Um, we have to remember that the other the, the sides that you would normally expect to be challenging for the title, bigger sides in, in Belgium, um, have dropped more points up to now than perhaps they would normally have done. So that, that's a factor which has helped. But the truth is, actually, Union could quite conceivably be even further ahead of second place Club Rouge than they are at the moment. That seven points really should be... I would argue 10 or 11, actually. They've been a little bit unlucky um, in that they've had a couple of draws recently, Union, which, which have, you know, reduced that gap just, just slightly. Um, what, the one caveat here, actually, and it is a really important one, I think, anybody who doesn't watch or know Belgian football won't know, probably, um, that there's a very, very curious thing we have here in Belgian football um, where uh, there's a system of playoffs that come into play. So after 34 games, and that's when everybody's played each other twice, what happens is two playoffs um, arise. And the team that finish in the top, the top four teams comprise playoff one after 34 games. Um, and those four sides then play each other again twice, so six six games each. Uh, they play off for the title. But here's the caveat. At this point, all of the points are halved. So let's assume the Union are still seven points clear of Club Bruges for the sake of argument at that stage. That seven points becomes three points which is a different scenario entirely when you then play another six games against the three sides around you. Um, so a lot of people are of the opinion that they'd love to see Union win it, but that that playoff caveat probably is going to count against them. I don't necessarily agree with that because unless they're hit with some unexpected injuries or their form takes a dip, then there's no reason why they can't do this because they've shown they've shown they've had great results against the big boys so far. So you know they can more than hold their own. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, but yeah, they, they they can win it. And, and I hope they do win it because I think I think it'd be great for Belgian football and I think it'd be great for European football as well. Um, and just imagine how that might factor into the club's long-term development plans as well because, you know, Union would then have the prospect of Champions League football, which, you know, almost quadruples the turnover they potentially, you know, that will be going through the club. So, you know, you know winning this title, which is, is some way away yet, but winning it has huge implications for the future of the club as well because there are some name you know Dan uh, Van Zier and Undav and Mazu will be attracting serious attention from other clubs now because of what's going on there so being able to win the title could also make the difference in them staying longer at the club as well so it, it's huge for, for for all sorts of reasons. Thank you so much for Scott for coming on to the video. Remember guys to go follow them on Twitter. Stay up to date on all Belgian football news with their podcast. Go give them a follow. Fantastic podcast. And I, as I said before, they have a special guest coming on to the show very soon. So Royal Union, a very interesting club, a fantastic story, a side that hasn't been in the top division for more than 50 years and are currently leading the league. Can they actually do it? 
it's going to be tough. We know Scott talked about the playoffs in the Belgian first division. I don't quite like that. I think they should just play the 38 matches or how many matches they play and determine the winner like that. But unfortunately, that's not the case. They go through the playoffs, adds a little bit of more drama to it. But Royal Union, they have the players. Will they have that sort of underdog mentality right now will teams take them more serious because obviously with the team newly promoted some teams might not take them as serious but now they're not going to have the element of surprise they're going to be the hunted and not the one hunting the other team so that's the royal union rise video hopefully you guys enjoyed the video fantastic stuff from scott as well giving in-depth analysis about the whole club if you're new around here subscribe to the channel like the video have a beautiful day stay safe everybody adios